basics of top badminton always start with good footwork and all movements on a badminton court start from a central base position which can change slightly depending on the situation in the play. All movements start from this base position with a small jump or split step which we can see as players return to the base and use the split step to load the muscles in preparation for movement to the next shot. Let's look at this step. The player times the landing to coincide with the opponent hitting the shuttle. Players never stand still after the step, but always push away quickly to the next position in the court. Let's look at some more examples of this step being used in a game. There. There. Next, let's look at another important step, called the chasse movement. Here the feet move or slide along one behind the other, much like a fencer moving. Never do my feet cross over during this step. We can use the chasse movement in all parts of the court. Moving to the net and recovering to the base position, moving sideways and to the rear court, and also in all recovery steps returning to my central base position. Here we see the chasse movement to the back of the court and also used again on the first step returning back into court. The player's feet don't cross, they chase each other back to the base. Now we can see Gubao of China using the chassis step to generate power to push back to his base. Body rotation is important in the rear court. In the rear forehand corner, you can use the rotation both to generate power in the shot and also to speed recovery back to the center. The player starts the rotation with the right foot behind and then rotates his or her body through 180 degrees about its vertical axis to land with the right foot in front of the left. Notice how the player uses good footwork to get behind the shuttle and transfer her weight forward into the shot and return into the court. Pushing powerfully off the right foot up and into the shot, landing with the left foot back and body weight already moving forward. The block jump can be used in the rear forehand court when pressured by a fast low clear for example, which does not allow time for a full body rotation. It can also be used to save energy. The player moves back with the right foot towards the rear forehand corner and jumps up to intercept the flight of the shuttle, landing with her right foot still nearest the back. The first recovery step back into the court is always a chasse movement. Look at these examples in a game. The player moves up towards the shuttle as she moves backwards under pressure. When 
I play a forehand shot from my rear backhand corner, we say I'm playing round the head. The body rotation here is the same as for the forehand side. I start the weight transference in the jump with my right leg nearest the back line and landing with my left leg nearest the back line after a full body rotation of 180 degrees around a vertical axis. On landing, I push forward into the court. One can describe this jump and rotation as preparation for recovery to my base. The first step on recovery is always a chassis step as usual. Watch these examples in a game. Watch how the player turns his body into the shuttle as he makes the shot. Movement from the base position to play a backhand shot from my rear backhand corner starts with a chassis step. Then, as I step into the shot, my right foot strikes the ground at the same time as I hit the shuttle. It is important that I time the hit's movement correctly, so my right foot strikes the court exactly as I strike the shuttle. there. There. Movements to the net always end with a right foot lunge for a right hander. Using the lunge step, I land on the right foot as I strike the shuttle and push off back towards the base. The left foot drags towards the right foot, acting as a brake or parachute to slow my forward movement in the lunge. I then move off back towards the base in a chassis step. It's important that I try to keep my upper body upright throughout the whole movement and don't collapse or fall towards the net. The player tries to take the shuttle as early and high as possible. Movement to the backhand side at the net is just the same as to the forehand side. I step with my left foot from the base and then lunge on the right foot, using a chasse movement back. After the lunge, I mostly use my right leg strength to stop my forward movement and begin my recovery. Again, it's important to keep my upper body straight throughout the movement, and use of the left foot as that break again is important. The right foot lunge can be seen here again when moving to the side to return a smash on the forehand. The movement starts with a small chassis step and then a lunge out to the sideline and then a recovery step to the base with a return chassis step. When returning a smash that's closer to the body, I don't need the first chassis step but just use a direct lunge out to the shuttle.
When defending on the backhand side, I use two different movement patterns. The first is, when under pressure from a smash near the sideline, I may have to lunge across onto my right foot. When the smash comes close to the body, I can just use a lunge onto the left foot, keeping the body much squarer to the net. Use of a block jump to the forehand side is to intercept a flat clear or low lift from the net. I jump out from my base and on landing quickly use a chasse movement to return to my base position. Balance and control of the body movement are important. Watching the game here. The block jump on the backhand involves the player jumping out to the side and intercepting the shuttle round the head. This is a more difficult movement on the backhand side than on the forehand. The jump takes you out towards the side of the court with a landing on the left foot. A very wide shuttle may involve me using a small chasse step to start and then a chasse recovery after the jump to move me back towards the centre. Notice how the following examples use a progression. To start with, the trainer feeds from a central position throwing shuttles to the forehand and the backhand alternately. The second exercise here shows the trainer feeding into the rear court, the player practicing the footwork movement to get the highest quality possible. Finally here we see a full multi-shuttle practice, the trainer feeding to all points on the court, the player doing her best to keep the footwork movements up to a high standard. The trainer does not feed too fast so that the footwork patterns break down. The last exercise in this sequence is often called corners work. Here the trainer can feed the shuttle to all points on the court and the player has to retrieve the shuttle and hit it back to that corner as in a real rally. Shadow badminton is a very useful method of practicing footwork. Here we see the player using two diagonal corners to practice, moving through the centre, lunging at the net and moving to the rear court on the forehand. The second shadow badminton exercise involves a change of direction on the base. Notice the split step here. Finally, we see the player using a full random shadow badminton exercise.
Here she can go to any of the corners on points on the court, practicing the foot movements as best she can, gradually building up speed as she becomes more confident in the exercises. Let's look for balance, control, rhythm and quality of the footwork movement. Speed is gradually built up by constant practice and repetition by the player.